Good morning. Uh, today's video is going to be opening and unpacking a Martin uh, guitar kit. This came from uh, the Martin Guitar Company several years ago. It was first, it was sold from Martin to Musician's Friend, which is a big online uh, retailer, one of Martin's big dealers. And uh, someone bought it, and then one of my cousins bought it from him. So I'm not sure how old this is. I would guess somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 years. But this gives you an idea of what uh, a guitar kit consists of. Uh, Martin is uh, closed down right now because of the corona uh, 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 pandemic and uh, they uh, I'm not sure how long it'll be before you'd be able to purchase any kits from them but fortunately John Hall with Blues Creek Guitars if you just do a Google search for Blues Creek Guitars can uh, sell you a kit uh, he is uh, much more flexible than Martin is. He can give you the same or better quality kit, and he can do it for any kind of guitar you want to build, whether it's uh, Taylor or Gibson or Martin, any model, any body shape. All right, so let's open this up. I've already cut it open because if I uh, slip my fingers open, I didn't want that to be on uh, video, so... Let's open up the top here. This will be my first look at it. All right, a lay, layer of bubble wrap. Another layer of bubble wrap. Another layer of bubble wrap. Some foam. All right, first thing we have here is a, is a raw neck. Go ahead and open that up. That's a, that is a very nice mahogany neck with a, uh, with an Indian rose wood head plate up there. It's got the volute for a D28 style. So, and that is a, a dovetail joint, neck joint. They're, they, Martin makes three different types of uh, neck joints now. There's the dovetail. Uh, a straight mortise and tenon, and a new one they call a simple dovetail. This is the traditional joint for a Martin neck. Alright, let's put that aside there. More bubble wrap. And a little bit of paperwork from 2014. I don't think that came from Martin. Alright, let's take a look here. The next thing out is the, this is the back, I believe. Yeah, that's, uh, this is the Indian Rosewood, East Indian Rosewood back. This wood is, is, is a, plantation grown now uh, it's a renewable resource they grow these trees on tea plantations because tea bushes or trees or whatever you want to call them grow the best as undergrowth underneath larger trees so they they plant these uh, Indian rosewood trees and then uh, and then grow tea bushes underneath them and then when these mature they harvest them and it is a beautiful wood. See, that's a nice. Turn around, you see here. They've already got this one kind of shaped to the shape of the guitar a little bit, but it needs to be joined, glued together in the center, to make the complete back. All right. Next thing is the sides. A kit will come with pre-bent sides, and this is a dreadnought style guitar, so it's one of the bigger style guitars. This a dreadnought is what you see in in any 
uh, bluegrass band. That's a typical bluegrass style guitar. It's the big one. Martin pioneered that shape before Gibson stole it from them for their uh, for their line of guitars. Gibson also stole bracing pattern from Martin for uh, their flat top guitars. So this is the this is the sides for that guitar. Now you see some oil where when you heat up a side to bend it, it will percolate some of the oils in the wood to the surface, and that's what those black spots are. That, that uh, and these streaks here, that sands off. Uh, one thing about it, this wood smells wonderful when you get it uh, hot or uh, when, you, uh, when you're sanding on it. It's not real evident right now because it's the, the odor goes away as, as it ages, but it's a uh, beautiful smelling wood. Let's see, we've got all our old parts here. Move these out of the way. And here is a, David, uh, the, the person that owns this kit, told me that he threw in, this is a bone, nut and saddle this is made from made from bleached cow bones the strings go across this down at the bridge and this is up the end of the neck this piece goes up here bone is the best acoustically uh, acoustic ma uh, material to make the nut and saddle out of the strings ride on that that transmits the uh, the sounds to the uh, to the body of the guitar better. All right, this is a um, Sitka spruce top. It's already got the the grooves uh, cut for the um, for the rosette. These here. This is what will go in those grooves and make the rosette. Just a second, I'll get something and show you what that's going to look like. Uh, believe it or not, when that's done, it will look like this pattern right there. And I'll be showing how to do that on a later video. All right. And this is the back strip for that goes in between the two pieces here that'll blow up like like so and I'll make the back strip on the guitar now this is the back strip this back strip is a uh, HD 28 back strip which means normally that back strip would go with a guitar that had uh, a herringbone inlay in the center there and a herringbone around the top. Now this one doesn't have that inlay. That doesn't mean this won't work. It just won't exactly match um, just a plain D28 back strip, which is what basically this kit is for. It's still a pretty back strip. Let's take a look here. A lot of people who are, especially guys that are used to building like model car kits and things like that, where you buy a kit and when you get the parts, you basically snap them together or glue them together. And they think, well, I can do the same thing with a guitar if the kits are made like that. Well, guitar kits aren't made like that. There is a lot of fit and finish to assembling a guitar kit. A guitar kit is more, rather than being like a model car kit, it's more a collection of all the, all the wood that you need and some of the materials are already pre-processed, like that fretboard right there is already cut 
the fret slots are already in it and it's already drilled for the position markers and it's interesting this one doesn't have position markers on the side I'm gonna to have to do position markers for that this is the line that lining that will go around the inside of the sides to make a wide enough gluing surface to glue the top and the back on. There's several strips here that you glue all the way around there, and I'll show you what that's like. This is a set of braces. This is top braces. This is the back braces. The back braces have a radius in them. 15 or 16 foot radius. In other words, if you put enough of these together, that curve right there would make a circle 32 foot in diameter, 16 foot radius. It's subtle, but that's, uh, that's why the back of a quality guitar has a little bit of a dome on it. All right, let's see. Here is the truss rod for the neck. two-way truss rod, so this isn't too awfully old of a kit. They only started doing this within about the pet. I bought a kit about 15 years ago, and it had the older style truss rod, so this is less than 15 years old. That goes in the neck like that, and then the fretboard glues on it like that, and then you've got a place there where you can insert a um, Allen wrench and that adjusts this truss rod to counteract the pull of the strings on the truss, truss rod. The string's trying to pull the neck this way and kind of make it bow. The truss, truss rod counteracts that and keeps the, the neck flat. Okay. And here is the binding that goes on the around the body of the guitar, and this is standard D28 binding. It's hard to tell now, but that will, that will go around the top, the top edge and the back edge uh, around the perimeter of the guitar. Years ago, that was to make uh, to make the guitar a little tougher, so if you bang the corners, this plastic would take the abuse rather than making a ding in the wood. But people tend to be a lot more careful with their guitars now. All right. All right, here's the neck and the end block. I had a video a couple of weeks ago where I showed gluing a rim together. And this is these, these parts go. This is this is the neck joint, and this is that dovetail joint I was telling you about. Take this part so I don't drop anything. But that's how the neck attaches to the body. It glues in up here on this end of the body. You cut out the wood that goes over top of it here once you glue it in. That's the gluing surface there. That leaves that open and then that neck goes in there like that. And you'll notice that it's, it's, there's an angle there, a matching angle, so when the, when the neck slides in there, it kind of locks in place. Now, a lot of folks are intimidated by these joints because they are until you get used to them, they're a little difficult to adjust because you've got four surfaces on the neck that you have to sand to get all the angles and everything right and get it to fit in there just right so that it's a tight fit, holds the neck in place at the proper angle to give you the proper string action uh, on the fretboard. And uh, so that's uh, a lot of people will buy kits or guitars with just a straight uh, uh, mortise and tenon joint because it's a little easier to adjust. But these, 
This is actually the simplest joint there is because there is no hardware with this. You've got two pieces of wood, and that's all there is to the joint. And it goes there, glues together, and stays that way. As a matter of fact, a properly fitting joint, once you get it fitted, you could actually string the guitar up and play it without gluing it in there. Okay, and the other piece that goes with that. Alright, where'd I lay it? I know somebody out there, oh, there it is. Okay, this is the piece that goes down on the other end of the guitar, the heel end of the guitar. There's a little bit of a radius on that because the bottom end of the guitar is curved just a little bit, but that's where the end pin will go in and the strap button go in on it. And it holds the two sides together. And you notice the grain goes side to side on that because if it was like that, then it could snap in half really easy. This ties the two sides together in one continuous piece. And then here, let's see what we've got. Oh, got a set of, uh, of tuners that actually, this is old enough where it still has Martin on the tuners. They have, Martin doesn't let that, that uh, copywritten uh, scroll come out of the factory anymore. The, any tuners you buy from them now are just plain. They don't say Martin on them. And here are the little, uh, let's see here. These little dots here are the pearl for the position markers that glue into the neck. Okay. And we've got the little strips of wood for the side reinforcements that glue in the side crossways here so that if it gets a crack, it stops it from, uh, from traveling. Got the, a black pick guard. Set of Martin strings. Let's see if there's a, there's no date on. Let's see, 80, 20 lights. Okay. And here's the bridge. It goes on the top. If you put it together, right? There's the bridge pins and the end pin. And this is the, this is the saddle and the nut that came with the guitar. See, the saddle will go in the, in that slot. This needs sanding down just a little bit. We'll go in that slot on the bridge, strings will go over it and down in the hole there. And this is the bridge plate that goes underneath the saddle. It'll be like, like that with the top in between here. And the holes go through the bridge plate. That's what reinforces the bottom of the top so that you don't, uh, you don't pull the string ends through the top. This is hard maple, hard rock maple. And then this is the end wedge that goes in the end of the guitar here. And that's pretty much it. Um, anybody who wants to build a kit, uh, build a guitar, it's a, it's a very fulfilling hobby to have. <clears throat> Don't think you're going to save money building the first guitar. Uh, you, there are some jigs and fixtures that you need to buy to, to actually do it right, and I'll be going over that in a later video. Uh, one of the things that I've found and I recommended, and I, I did the same thing myself, I, when I first bought my kit from Martin, I bought a triple uh, O28 kit. Uh, it, it exactly uh, met the specifications for an Eric Clapton uh, East, Triple O EC28. 
Uh, it was a really nice kit, some really nice wood, but you shouldn't start out with your green guitar. Buy the cheapest thing you can lay your hands on, the cheapest wood, um, because you're going to wish that you had learned to put one together before you, uh, you actually potentially mess up a kit. And this is what happens with a lot of kits too. They end up in the person's hand and they see this and they're completely intimidated and it's like, there's no, I don't even know where to start. So if you're going to get into it as a hobby, start with a, a mahogany or maple or something like that uh, body that's, that's less expensive and something to learn on and then move on towards uh, a more expensive guitar. One thing about it, once you get all the your special tools that you'll need to build the first one, the first one will cost as much as buying a new guitar. After that you can put them together cheap. I have built guitars for $25 or $30 in parts that turned out to be pretty nice guitars. So anyway, if you need to, uh, if you are interested in buying a kit or interested in a uh, uh, in a week's school to learn how to build one and to be assisted in building your first one and guaranteed that it will come out very nice, get in touch with John Hall with Blues Creek Guitars. He he does classes. And at the end of the class, a five-day class, you will have a very nice guitar. So that's, that's all for today. I'm going to do some videos again later, maybe another one or two this weekend. But uh, I'm also going to start a uh, YouTube channel uh, to post these on. So everybody have a nice day.